We need your blessing. We need your word. We need your spirit. We need your guidance in life. Lead us in your word in Jesus' name. We know you love us. And you are going to do good to every one of us. As you reveal your will to us this day, may we have the grace from you to be able to live a happy life within marriage in Jesus' name. We know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. By the special grace of God, we have been making progress on the series of teachings on marriage, the home, and the family. Already we have gone as far as how a believing couple or how two people planning to get married together can plan the wedding and now they come together in biblical marriage. Today we want to give attention to what a new family has to understand. And so we title the message Help for the Newly Marriage. And that doesn't mean only those who got married yesterday or two weeks ago. Newly married, you know, if you are still one year, you are still new in this thing. You don't know anything as yet. And if you can still remember the date you got married and the uh, picture is still fresh in your mind, you are part of my crowd, just listen, you are newly married. Now for those who have forgotten the day you got married It's so long away that you just don't know whether it was Saturday or Wednesday It's never late to start a good thing So listen and you'll receive help as well the beginning of anything is very important in particular the beginning of the home of marriage and the family is very important to you in Psalm 11 verse 3 we are told if the foundations be destroyed what can the righteous do? Ninu wo ni da fi dori kokan la se iketa so fun awi pe bi ipile ba baje ki le olododo yo se. So as you are beginning the life of the married person you want to understand what help the scriptures have for you. Nitori na bi o se nbere igbese aye eni to se se gbe yawo o fe mo kini iwe mi mo ni fun o. In Proverbs chapter 19 verse 20. Ninu wo wo ri kokan di logun ese ogun. Talking to those of us who have just got into this marriage. The word of God says, "Hear counsel, receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end." On by here, what I say is, be ya wuso, on si wuso fun awi pe feti si ma ki o si ba eko ki wo ki o le ban ni igbe hinre. How you start that marriage? How you plan that marriage? How you plan to live together in harmony and in unity and fellowship will determine your life, your peace, your future rest within that family. Therefore, hear instruction. Receive counsel and it will make you wise to the latter time. 
ki e wa ni repo ki e si wa ni dapo ki e si wa ni isokan pelu ara yin nisisin yi ati ni igba gbogbo bi o ba le fe ti si mo ki o si gba eko ki wo ki o le gbon ni igbehin re for those who have not got married i want to remind you of the words of jesus christ in matthew chapter 13 fun awon ti ko ti se gbe yawo mo feran le ti oro jesus christ ninu we matthew ori ketala verse 16 and 17 ese ikerin din logun ati iketa din logun you have not gone into it but you are still looking forward o ko ti da wa le sugbon si foju sona ni it says in matthew chapter 13 verse 16 and 17 o so ninu iwe matthew ori ketta la ese ikerin din logun ati iketa din logun but blessed are your eyes for what they see and your ears for what they hear sugbon ibukun ni fun oju yin nitori ti won ri for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Lo, tani mo wifu nyi a okolo kwa wuli a ti olo dodo ni mfe ri o hunti e yiri unwa kusiri unwa unwa si mfe gbo o hunti e gbo unwa kusi gbo unwa now you know how wonderful it is as you have been listening to these messages on marriage and yet marriage for you is future and so you have adequate preparation and understanding before you ever go into it si be ori yu ke oji agba ya nufo bi o she ngbo a unwa o nika o jokan nipa eko igbe ya wo yi to si jayi ke igbe ya wo tire o si wani o joy waju as well for help to the newly married i want to particularly center on three things one living to leave something two learning and three loving or you go back to number one again one cleaving and covering number two and three caring put them into pairs that means number one leaving and cleaving number two learning and covering and number three loving and caring you see in marriage you're moving from one stage to another stage you're moving from relationship with one group of people to relationship to another set of people you are going out of a place and you are getting into another place or you are being separated from some people only to be joined together to another person and whenever things happen like that readjustments are necessary I remember coming out of a secondary school and all the friends I'd ever known since I started secondary school we have been together, learning together, sharing together. But the year I entered university, I had to leave the people I knew before, and I was in an entirely new situation, new environment. A student leaving secondary school to university loses contact with all the former friends. All former close uh, associates. That student is leaving a group of people to come in to associate with a new group of people. Some students adjust very quickly but some other students are very very slow in adjusting you know what happens to an adult when he's transferred from his place of work to a far away town to go and be working there his office environment he knew before totally changed now close friends and close workers totally changed he's lost contact with 
his neighbors in the place is leaving his lost contact with them he goes to a new environment uh, completely if he is able to adjust life will be good for him if he is not able to adjust he may be miserable in that place of work the same thing there are people who have been close with before we just have to leave them when we get married so that brings us to point one leaving and cleaving genesis chapter 2 verse verse 18 and the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make and help meet for him. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and his slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Adam Verse 24. And this is where we got those two words. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Genesis chapter 24 Genesis verse 67 And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah and she became his wife and he loved her and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Isaac is in Munwa, see no go Sara, Yare, Osi Mu Rebecca, O dia Yare, Osi fair, as it to Isaac in no Lenny Qui Yare. As soon as Isaac got married to Rebecca, Niketi Isaac to Fair Rebecca, he had to stay and abide in his own tent rather than in the tent of Abraham. Only let it do, Kyosi, my bay, in Ule today, Diko Kyoma Bay, in Ule Abraham. Because Sarah had now had died. Into the Pesara Tikunisi and Isaac was using the tent of Sarah. Isaac is in law about Sarah. And now it says Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. This is also we pay Isaac is in she became his wife and the Lord one another in Proverbs chapter 5 reading verses 15 to 18 all these verses emphasize that there is a cleaving to a joining to a relationship and fellowship ways when we get married and then we leave uh, the close association and intimacy with our parents which we had before because now in Proverbs 5.15 Drink waters out of thine own cistern And running waters out of thine own well 
15 ese ke dogun mu omi lati inu lati inu kudu re ati omi tin san lati inu kan ga re now that is just saying in clean language scriptural language keep to your word eleyin so ni ede ti we mi mo wi pe duro pelu aya re verse 17 ese ke tadi logun let them be only thine thine own and not the strangers with thee ki won ki o je kiki ti re let thy fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 14 to verse 16. Only Solomon Urikeji Song of Solomon chapter 2 verse 14 to verse 16 Only Solomon urike ji ese ikerin lade ikerin dilogun Oh my dove thou art in the clefts of the rock in the secret places of the stairs let me see thy countenance let me hear thy voice for sweet is thy voice and thy countenance is comely take us the foxes the little foxes that spoil the vines for our vines are tender grapes, my beloved is mine, and I am his, he feedeth among the lilies. Adabami, to wa ni no pala pala ukuta, ni ibi koko ukuta, jaki e miri ojure, jaki e migba ohunre, ni tori didu ni ohunre, ojure si liewa, mua wa kolo kolo fun, onfun wa, a wa kolo kolo keke ke timba ajara je, ni tori ajara wa ni itana, olufe mi ni temi, imi si ni tire, on jela ani a wan lili. There is close fellowship and relationship when you have just got married. Now you know that the tendency is still to be attached to your parents. After you have, after you have married. Or with some people who have been your friends before. But if you have just married, will you please understand that God expects you to live leave the past and then join to this person who is to spend the future with you all throughout life. Now you need to really think about what I'm going to say now to understand. Now as you're newly married, you ought to understand three groups of people that you leave. That doesn't mean you don't talk to them anymore. It doesn't mean you don't go into their houses anymore. It does not mean that you don't seek for counseling or for advice whenever necessary. But when, when it comes to your marriage, you realize that only you you and your wife, only you and your husband can build that home and make that home what it ought to be. Number one, you leave your caring parents. Number two, the concerned people. And number three, this may surprise you, the counseling pastor. Number when you get married, realize that your parents care for you. And therefore, they will like to poke nose into every little detail of the marriage. Like you to come and report back to them how is it going. But you don't have anything to say yet. Because you are new in this marriage. You need to deliberately plan and how to make the marriage successful. So you don't keep running to the caring parents that, well, this is what I see or this is what I don't see. And you will not be going there every day, every night. Now to the concerned people. That means your close friends. After you have got married, 
married, you have got married. And those concerned people, you can still discuss business, you can still discuss uh, material things, you can still discuss work, but marriage never. And there are some foolish uh, concerned people who come to us newly married people. How is she? How do you find her? How about a quiet time? Is she submissive at all? Ask them, is that your business? Are we training the woman together? Are we living together? Suppose she is not what she ought to be. Can you do anything about it? Is, your, is she pregnant now? Is that your business? You must leave all these concerned people to cling to your wife. Now you must also leave the counseling pastor. You see, before you got married we ran to the pastor pastor look at a nail in my in my leg help me put put it out the pastor will help you pull it out after you got married you are washing place and the cup you know slashed your hand you go to your husband go to the pastor after you got married there is a little problem you don't run with every little little problem to the pastor pastor come and see what i see the pastor will break your home because the pastor will tell you to pray 24 hours of the day you will not realize you are now married and there is time for cooking there is time for washing there is time for everything and all these other pastors, self self pastors who go around asking newly married people, how is it? How is it? Let them shut up. I want to ask you 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 now what do you say at home? I'll go and see bro. I know that if I see bro, maybe on Sunday or Monday, just give me the cash. No, we discuss together this small problem we spend five hours on it. Now after you've got married and your husband said, why did you wake up at 6 o'clock? Why not 5.30? I'll go and see bro. Don't come. Stay in your house. See your husband, she he'll, he'll put you right. He's the head of the home and it is the one to control you. And there are difficult areas where you need to sit with the pastor for counseling. But permit me to use this illustration. No, whenever we say, if there is a little headache, we don't go to the doctor. If there is a little pain in your leg, you don't, you don't run to the doctor immediately. But if there is a major accident and the bone is broken, well, you know you cannot hide that one in the home. You have to take that to the hospital. The same thing in the day to day problems of marriage the man and the woman will sit down together talk it over handle it with the bible on their own but there is if there is something that is beyond their control that is so great and too deep they cannot handle privately together it is only then by mutual agreement they will seek help from uh, wherever 
that they can get help scripturally. Nigba now ni won le ijo fi ohun sokan lati lo lati lo gba iran lowo ni ibi ti won ba ni pe won ti gba. That means we leaving these people the parents, the people and the pastor. E ni pe an fi awon eni won sile awon obi awon abanikedun ati olusuagutan. So that we can have time and understanding to understand ourselves and then take care of the home together. Ke ba le raye lati lo lati jo loye ara yin kesi jo toju ile papo. Now when you get money you cling to your wife and the wife will cling to the husband. Nigba to ba se gbe iyawo oko yo da ko ma ya re aya yo da ko mo oko re. Now in um, Genesis chapter 2 let's read it again. E je ki atun kan ewe Genesis ori keji le kan si. Verse 24. Ese e kerin le. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh nitori na le okunrin yo se ma fi baba won iya re sile yo si fi ara ma iya re won o si di ara kan matthew chapter 19 matthew oriko kan din logun verse 5 ese i karun for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they twain shall be one flesh therefore they are no more twain but one flesh nitori eyi ni okunrin yo se fi baba ati iya re sile yo fa mo aya re awon mejeje asidi ara kan nitori na won ki se meji mo bi ko se ara kan ephesians chapter 5 ephesians ori karun verse 31 ese iko kan le logmo for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh nitori eyi ni okunrin yo se fi baba ati iya re sile ohun o si dapo ma aya re awon mejeje asidi ara kan now the word cleave means to have a bond that cannot be broken ni dapo mo o tu mo si pe ki eniyan ki o ni isopo to je pe a ko le ja you know the strongest type of gum you call it glue o mo wi pe ohun ti a fi ti a fi le nkan papo ni edo yin ba n pe ni glue and then the greek or sorry in the hebrew it means you are glued together in a covenant relationship with this other person e ni pe ni e ni ede greek eyin mejeji ati le yin papo ninu ma ninu iba se ko ma it means two hearts that are diligently utterly committed to one another in love they are stuck together in the will in the heart in the spirit in the emotion they are all joined together not to be broken e ni pe awon kan meji ti won ti ti amu wa papo ti a si le papo ninu ise kan won ninu ife won ninu ife nu won ati ninu ngbogbo ton ba nse authorities in uh, languages the ancient languages like hebrew and greek they tell us that the hebrew word used for marriage is um, kidushi eh awon alase ninu ede heberu ati greek won so fun wi pe ede na ti a lo fun igbeyawo o na ni eh kidushi and uh, this word means that you are in a covenant and there is a consecration a setting apart from society to one another eh gbo lo oro yi o si wa tumo si pe eyin mejeji e ti ya e ti yapa e ti yakuro ninu awon awujo ninu aye sugbon eyin mejeji e ti wa wa papo ni sisin yi the wife is saying i am separated completely and totally unto the husband and the husband is saying i am totally and completely separated from all else unto the wife i i ayayo ma wi pe ohun ti yapa pata pata kuro lodo gbugbu eniyan nisisin ohun wa fa mo oko ba kan na ni oko yo ma wi nkan kan na wi pe ohun ti yapa kuro lodo gbugbu eniyan ti wa da ko ma ya won in first corinthians chapter 7 ninu corinthians kini ori keje verse 3 and 4 ese iketa ati ikerin let the husband render Uh, unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband ki oko ki o ma se ohun to ye si aya be gege si le aya pelu si oko the wife has no power over her own body but the husband aya ko le agbara lori ara re bi ko se oko you see you become totally yielded and submitted unto that man wa jo wa ara re patapata fun okunrin yi your body your life your emotions your everything committed to uh, making this marriage work with your husband gbogbo igbese aye re okan re imo lara re gbogbo re ati mo ninu re ni wa fi fun okunrin yi and likewise also the husband has not power 
of his own body but the why be gege li oko pelu ko si li agbara lori ara re bi ko se aya now you see it sometimes uh, just one way in yeah. the world ni igba miran o ma nda be ni pe ona kan sha ni ninu aye you know the husbands expect total commitment and total consecration a uh, total setting apart from the wife but the husband doesn't give the same commitment to the wife ni igba miran o ko ma nre ti iya ifara ni ji ati iya ni soto pata pata fun oko nigba ti oko ko ni se nkan kan na but you see the scripture puts it on both sides me we mi mo o je ko di se oju se amejeji you commit yourself completely to your wife la fi ara re ji pata pata fun aya and then she commits herself totally to the husband iya ya pelu yo fi ara re ji pata pata fun oko re so is strong bond of love and affection that cannot be broken lona lona e so po to je pe o lagbara o si le ti akule ja and in this same first corinthians chapter 7 look at verse 33 ninu we corinthians kan na ori keje ese iketa le logmon but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world that he may please his wife sugbon eni ti o gbe iyawo a ma se itojo ohun ti aye bi o se le hun aya re now you see in that place it says that he must please his wife ni ori to so wi pe o gbodo ti aya re o gbodo wu aya re those who are not scripturally taught but uh, denominationally brainwashed they say that well if you please your wife that's a sign of weakness e awon miran to je pe won kan ti ko nipa esin lasan ni won ma wi ti won ko ko gege bi we mo ti wi won ma wi pe bi o ba wu aya re eleyi ni pe o je alai lera and some miserable counselors they go around telling them i hope that you are not pleasing your wife because you know if you do that's weakness awon awon abosi agbani ni moro miran won ma lo ka kiro ma so pe mo lero wi pe o ku wu aya re bi o ba wu o tu mo si ai lera fun o you know she is not a servant she is a wife omo odo ko ni se iyawo and the bible says see the that is married careless and he careless for things that are material secular physical emotional that's all that is called the things of the world there that he may please and satisfy his wife eh ni o si so wi pe eni to gbe yawo a ma se itoju ohun ti eh ohun ti se ti aye eleyi ni awon kan ni gege bi ife ati imo lara ati imo ninu ati imo lokan obirin yi lati le ma se itoju re ohun to pe ni ohun ti aye ni yi verse 34 the last part of verse 34 but she that is married careth for the things of the world how she may please her husband you may ni ti agbe ni iyawo a ma toju ohun ti se ti aye bi yo ti se le wu oko re you see it's in the same way the the wife also is uh, very careful and diligent to please the husband ba kan na ni aya pelu o je eni ti o ki esara ti o si nja wa fa lati le toju lati le toju ati lati le wu oko re so the very first thing you uh, get into is that you leave a group of people then you cleave onto your husband nitori na won akoko ohun ti wa ko so na ni pe wa fi awon kan sile wa si dapo mo oko re i go to number 2 and this is very important and essential mo lo si ekeje eleyi si se pataki o se koko this is learning and covering eleyi ni kikeko ati didabugo now when you come together nigba te ba jo wa papo you need to learn many things about your wife oni lati ko opopo nkan nipa aya re your wife is different and unique your wife is uh, not like any other person you have ever known aya re je eni to ya to to si da duro fun ra re and uh, you have come into a training ground and in training you have a lot to learn o tu wa je papa ikeko ni sisin ni papa ikeko si ni lati keko i know those who have married mo ma won to ti se gbeya wo learn more about their car than they learn about their wife to won ko ju to won ko nipa mo to won ju won bi won ti nko nipa aya won lo they learn more about things that are secular immaterial and, and, and more than they learn about their wives mo ma ko nipa awon nkan ti ara ti ara awon nkan ti ko wu lo ju won ju bi won ti nko nipa aya won lo to see your many things to learn about your wife mo ni opolopo nkan lati ko nipa aya and then the wife has a lot to learn about the husband that na ni aya ni opolopo nkan lati ko nipa oko that man is totally different from any man you had ever seen in secondary school university or in the office or anywhere okunrin o yato gedegede si awon yo wo ki o ti ba pade tabi ki o ti ri yala ni college ni tabi university tabi ni bi ise re but can i warn you ti mo je ki nki lo fo as you learn put your hand in your mouth bi o se keko fi owo re di enu re close your mouth 
you learn and you cover you don't go to expose outside what you are learning what you are seeing about your wife my wife is lazy that's what you are learning cover it up my wife doesn't know how to go on in a good conversation that's what you are learning cover it up my wife doesn't know how to spend cover it up you, you understand that whenever you are learning from your wife like that you are learning the need so you can prepare the syllabus because you are now her teacher and it's a syllabus you only can handle I am my own syllabus for my wife so don't come and give me yours now other people you go to see they are also learning their wives and they are seeing their wives and they are trying to develop their syllabus and how to help their wives don't go and expose your own syllabus to them. I want miracle. One one corner by one I am saying, don't talk about that. The fault you see in your wife. With a friend, with your parents, with anybody, when you learn, you cover it all. The same thing from the wife to the husband. As you learn, you cover. Don't go on exposing your husband. Bringing shame upon your husband. For his weakness or for some things he may not be doing right. Now let me show you in Proverbs chapter 10. Verse 12. Verse 12. Hatred strives in his heart. Verse 12. Verse 12. Hatred strives up stars of stripes but love covers all sins Proverbs chapter 12 verse 16 a fool's wrath is presently known but a prudent man covers shame Proverbs chapter 16 verse 32 he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty he that ruleth the spirit than he that taketh a city and it's all right it be no also do a lot about a and it was here because we're married who do any to share going to love Proverbs chapter 17 verse 9 who will recall cut at the new one is a case on he that covers a transgression seekers love but he that repeats a matter separates very friends and it's your boy she mole on wife shukman and it's your two or no who see left or no who see left now let me show you some things when I was at school I had difficulty and my difficulty was much with spelling you know sometimes we uh, were taught on how to spell this word and spell this word and spell this word in our, in our own school there was a particular day we knew that there was a spelling test our principal was a soldier in the second world war and when he used the cane we knew he was a soldier and then he would bring us all into the class and, and he would tell us to spell we started was spelling about 20 words. You miss some of those words and you are in for trouble. And for a long, long time, I learned spelling. If you wrote an I, you didn't dot it, they marked you wrong. You didn't spell it well. And it was real trouble. And so I want to tell you that learning how to spell is real work. 
so fun pe ki o ko bi a se ma n pe oro ni ko kan o je oro nla what i'm going to say now may look simple but it is very deep in kan ti mo fe so nisin o le da be ni pe oro ran sugbon o jin le a true wife is one who can spell the word wife not with your lips but with your life iyawo iyawo to to o je ni ti o le pe iyawo ni ko kan ki se pelu ahan re la san sugbon pelu igbese aye re a true husband is the one who can spell the word husband not with your lips but with your life oko to to ki se oko to je pe o kan le ma pe oko pelu eti enu re la san sugbon bi ko se pelu igbese aye re what's the spelling for why ki ni o bi a ba oni a se pe aye ah you say is that what we came to church to learn oni a se nkan ta wa si church lati wa we know that am eyi because that is just w i f e nitori pe iyi awi oni yi but what does it mean Now number one, it means if you are a wife, W means you are wise in communication. I means you are innocent in character and you are industrious in caring. Ati pe oje eniti 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 ki isheni ni no iware ti osi je eniti to 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 vawo. That means you are faithful in companionship and you are forgiving in conflict. Ati pe otu je o to ninu ibanikegbe ati pe o tun dariji ni ninu ija e means you are excellent in counsel and excellent in comfort ni akoto re o tun je ni ti iwa re peye ti se re si peye so you see if you cannot spare that was your life you cannot be a wife bi o ko ba le pe bi o ko ba le fi igbese aye re ki o fi so oro yi jade o ko le je aye proverbs chapter 14 ninu we o we ori kerin la plus one ese ikini every wise woman builds her house olukuluku ologbo obirin ni iko ile re you need wisdom in communication o ni lo ogbo ninu ati ba ni so when you discuss with your husband nigba to ba ba ya to ba ba oko re when you relate with your husband nigba to ba ba oko re And in Proverbs chapter 15, in the way we look at the verse two, I say, "The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright." Aha, logman lo imarere. And are you wise in the way you use your tongue at all? He just, he just logman be oche man lo aha. In the first part of verse four, in the part, koko I say, I say, Kenny. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Aha, in mula rada ni gi. You want your husband to eat and to live from the tree of life. Your tongue will tell. Oh, thank you, Uncle. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. You see, you see, you see, Jenny, you give me. Aha, are you so? In chapter sixteen, verse twenty-one. Holy kind, the logo is saying, "Kokan, the logo." The wise in heart shall be called prudent. Oh, logma ya liyau pe liyamu ye. The sweetness of the lips increases learning. It do it ya si mamu e koko. And in chapter sixteen, verse twenty-three. In holy kind, the logo is saying, "Kita, the logo kana." The heart of the wise. Teachers is mouth and others learning to his lips. Aya ologbon mu oro enu regbon o si mu ekoko ni eti re. Proverbs 31 verse 20 say. O wo ri kokan le logbon ese ikerin din ni ogbon. She the wife openness her mouth with wisdom. And in our tongue is the law of kindness. O fi ogbon ya enu re yi ni iyawo. ati li ahan re li ofin seun so that means that when you live together with your husband as a wife be wise in your communication eyi ni pe nigba to ba nba oko re gbele gege bi aya iwo je ologbon ninu ibasoro ko re talking together in your discussion let wisdom guide you in what you say so you are building your house you are not demolishing or destroying your own house with your hand ninu ijo soro ko yin tabi ijo fomi to roro ijo fomi to ijo foro jomi to roro pelu ara yin oni lati ma fi ogbon soro ki o ba je wipe n se lo n fi owo ara re ko ile ara re i in our spelling is innocent in character eleyi to tun tele ninu oro igbeyawo o na ni ki eniyan ki o je eni ti iwa re dara ninu iwa you don't miss your body o ni se ara re lu you don't go around in a suspicious way that your husband will not be able to trust you and have confidence in you o ni ma nirin kaakiri lona to je pe oko re yo wa be si ma fun ra si o proverbs chapter 31 ninu we wo ri kokan le logbon verse 10 to verse 12 e se ike wa de ikeji la you can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above ruby ta ni yo ri obirin oni wa rere nitori ti ye re koja yin the heart of her Husband does safely trust in her, 
so that he shall have no need of spoil. Aya oko regbe ke le lai beru be ni un ki yoshi alai ni eri she. That means she's so innocent, she's so pure, she keeps herself from all men in society. Ini ipe ko ni kakan she pe lua ngon ko ni timbe ni a ujo. Her body is totally yielded and committed to the husband and no one else on the face of the whole earth. Oti fi ara reji, pata pata o siti ya soto pata pata fun o kore ki she fun elu mena ni no aye. When the husband travels out of town, that husband is confident because he trusts that wife. Eh, nimba choko eba si ni ni ajo lo si ibo mena yo ni okonre yo bale ni tori pe ugbe ke li obini yi. She doesn't receive letters that she will hide from the husband because the contents of the letter are so, you know, personal that the husband must not know. Ugo nimba letter to jaype yo ma fi kama fun okonre ni tori pe awon oro to mbe ni ni letter na ki she ito okonre ekbo dori. And in verse 12, ni no se ke jila. So she will do him good, not even all the days of her life. She is not only innocent in character, but she is industrious in caring for the whole. Verse 13. You see, there is work to do at home. We call it housekeeping. The floors get dirty. She is industrious in cleaning it up. The clothes, the clothes need washing or laundry. After eating, the dishes need washing or cleaning. Food needs to be cool. Needs to make the bed and keep the room tidy and neat. And all the things in the home need to be neatly, you know, put into order. And if she does doesn't have the right attitude in the work at home. There'll be a mess at home. Bigo ba si ni wa to ye si e ishe to mbe ni nule e bogo re ni o da le o do duri ni nule. Cleanliness contributes to the happiness of the home, so the husband can come home and just rest because the environment is very clean. Imato to o lo wani no e o lo wani no ilira ile ki o ko ba le wo le ki o si fokan ba le si mi. And in Proverbs thirty one verse twenty seven. Inu we wuri ko kali logo e se keta di logo. Lookers well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. And then earth means she is faithful in companionship. You see, you are a companion. Bear the body together with your husband. Be comforting to your husband. Support your husband. Your husband. Be a real partner to your husband. Don't criticize. Don't beat him down. Don't cut him to pieces. Anytime he comes, let him know you are a companion and a partner indeed. Whenever they're going, it's hard and tough for him outside. Let him come home and know that there is a body sharer. And you see having problems with the in-law, be in support of your husband and be caring. Let him know that this is a real companion. In Genesis chapter 2, in Genesis chapter 2, in Genesis verse 23, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bone. Adam si wi pe eyi yi le egungun ninu egungun mi after 2 years 3 years 5 years 10 years of marriage let your husband be able to say that is bone of my bone eh leyin odun kan odun kan odun meji odun meta odun marun odun mewa ibeyawo je ki oko re ki o tun le so pelu iboyawo pe eyi yi gan ni egungun ninu egungun let your husband say i don't know what life will be for me if it were not for my wife je ki oko re le so wi pe nko emi ba ba ma ti mo ti aye yi ba je fun mi ba ma si ti yawo let him receive such a wonderful amount of abundance of care and comfort and companionship 
and support and love that she'll be, you'll be able to say this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh I can't live a single day without her help she is faithful in companionship but she is also forgiving in conflict and in um, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you Emma show reform money KG and you know Emma Dari Jara Gagabi alone in Christy T Dari G. Now the last of you know this spelling is excellent in counsel and comfort. Eh you let us see party nino eh bolony or no ni we pay and it took pay ye nino it to nino no is t banica in some sixty nine verse twenty nino only that we do re cock and dini I don't yes we see the sorrow, the sadness, the heartache of a man that did not have a counseling wife, a comforting wife. Ari Banuja Kokoni at Doriko do Kong. The Lord was savvy, but there was nobody to bear it with him. The road was long and the journey weary, but there was nobody to help and to care and to comfort. The tears were running, but there was no hand to wipe away the tears. And in Psalm 69 verse 20 You know that video record can be like Don't you say Reproach has broken my heart I am full of heaviness I looked for some To take pity But there was none For comforters But I found none Why? For you there? If you are really standing in the place You ought to stand your husband will not have this difficulty this complaint now if the wives pass like that how about the husband H is for holy in conscience U is for understanding in conversation correction and criticism S is strong in caring and compassion. For B is blameless in conduct both at home and abroad. A is abiding in the covenant of marriage. And this man is noble in courage. For D is dependable in contribution to the family need. Uh, now this man is married and he has just newly got married and he must spend his life learning how to spell the word husband one holy in conscience and you see that in the book of Job uh, uh, chapter 31 this is a married man. And what does he say? In Job 31 verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I sink upon a maid? You see after you are married. You have got the woman that God wants you to have. Keep uh, together with her. Leave other women. 
women all alone. And that is the very beginning of the realization that now you are happily married. Because if you touch another woman, you will not be innocent. You will not be holy. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22, we are told abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, men uh, listen very well now. We are coming to a difficult area in marrying. Understanding, in conversation, in correction, in criticism. Realize that the marital life is a life of learning. Realize that you are learning many things about your wife. And one of the things you must possess as a husband is understanding in conversation. Understanding in correction. Understanding on the use of criticism. Proverbs chapter 15. Verse 23. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and added learning, added learning to his lips. And that is uh, 1623. Now let me read to you 1523. Uh, now 1523 now. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. A word spoken in due season. How good is it? Now you realize we have one mouth and two ears. What does that mean? That means uh, if you listen to your wife two hours, you talk only one hour. You realize what will happen in the world if God will change the order. Give us two mouths and give us one ear. So already we it's only one mouth there is too much talking and there is not enough listening to one another but if the Lord had changed the whole thing and suddenly you realize that you have two mouths so it's cha 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 every time and the only one year that you have you see that's a message be quick to listen. Be long at listening. Realize that you give double the time to listening to your wife and half the time to talking to your wife. If we do that, there will be peace at home. Now when we are correcting or criticizing the wife, realize that when you correct your partner in the presence of other people, People, you are pouring some foric acid upon the head of your wife. I was in the laboratory in 1960, I think it was. Now, we are finished the chemistry lesson. You know, we were given these uh, things to be able to uh, be able to suck water out of a test tube or out of a cylinder. And then after the teacher went out of the class, we were left in the laboratory alone. I took that thing, I put it into a bottle with acid. You know, we were just playing uh, in the laboratory. And since there was no teacher there, we were free. But I used my freedom and I, and I you know, sucked up uh, this acid. That thing burnt more than fire. I felt it on my lips.
kiss on him on my tongue. Uh, and it was no play anymore. It was now serious. Acid is destructive. You think of a man that is pouring acid on the wife every day, every morning, every afternoon, and every night, pouring acid on the wife. No wonder you've killed your wife. He was a he was a publicly. You criticize her publicly. You correct her publicly. And in an explosive type of language that is evil and bad. Yeah, you don't know the man. Tell you, you know the man. Bad. You know the man. So, 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 you know the you criticize, you think about all these 12 things. So, you know the man. 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 So as to make your criticism positive and constructive. Number one. Number one. When something goes wrong in the home, don't think that you assume or don't assume that you know who is wrong. You may be the one that is wrong. Number two. Get the facts before you ever talk about that matter. Don't just say get a supposition. Maybe this is what happened. And then you start rebuking your wife. Be patient and get the facts before you ever open your mouth to talk. I want to call you. Don't want to be seen. Lord, we pray. Boya le lo chele. Boya to ni o chele. Walk to come. Man, we pray. In katuja o titoni. Number three. Don't pull in what happened there three years ago, five years ago, two years ago, or what happened last week. Keep yourself. Make it clear what is wrong now that we need to talk about. I want to be seen. Man, fine. Katuja o chele. Ni o shuketa. Tabi o du keta. Tabi o du keni. Number four, manifest love and control your temper while you are speaking to correct your wife. Eh. Don't criticize an attitude of pride. Kenny, you are Kiosi, Ko, a Binu, Reni, Janu, Niba, Tobanfe, Ba, Aya, Resort, Abito, Banfe, a Toss, on a Nino, Kun, Tobashi. Now, do you know that many times when uh, something happens in the vehicle outside between us and our wife, we begin to correct? In German, Penny, Bamina, Nita, Ti, Awa, Pelua, Awa, Taba, Jawa, Kopako, Tobashi, Katiko, To, Abbe, Sima, Ba, Wule, Seke, 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 don't do like that. This is number five. Speak to her in private, personally, never openly when you are correcting something. If you've gone to the hospital before and uh, you know they've given you um, you know any operation. The first of all, apply something on that area of the body. They apply the anesthetics to deaden the pain of that place before they operate on it. Correction and criticism is like operation. The knife of correction will be very, very painful if there is no anesthetics to deaden the pain. What's the anesthetic you apply in the family before you correct and criticize? Pray her first. Also, love her first. Commend her for something that she has done well. Showing show interest in her welfare before you ever open your mouth to correct and criticize. Because love is in local anesthetics to, that allows you to perform that operation. Number seven, share your part of the blame. She is not all wrong. Share part of the area where you are 
Take responsibility for that mistake and mean it sincerely when you say so. Now, number eight. Listen to her side of the story. Create a good atmosphere for her to talk and defend herself if necessary. Number nine, protect her dignity and her personality. Now, when you correct something and you don't suggest what to do to correct it, uh, you know that's no correction at all. Number ten, suggest specific steps to prevent the recurrence of the mistake. Eleven, pray for her and pray with her sincerely and in faith that that mistake will not be repeated again. Number twelve, forgive and forget. Bear no grudge. Let love continue. If we do that before we ever criticize, there will be peace at home. There will be love at all. So the husband is holy in conscience and she is understanding in conversation, correction, and criticism. Strong in caring and companionship. Blameless in conduct. Abiding in the covenant. Noble in courage. You know what David did when a lion came to take an animal away from the flock? To protect and to defend an animal. David went out and he smote that lion. If David was so courageous in defending an animal, how courageous are you? How noble are you in defending your wife? Protecting her in society. Protecting her with the in-laws. Protecting her with the children. Then you are dependable for contribution to family needs. And then the third part is loving and caring. Love is so essential and central in marriage. Already we have been talking about all these things and everything is wrapped up in the in the paper of law. And then for those of us who have been married for law, you enjoyed your marriage when you started. God is saying today I have something against you. You have left your first love. When love goes out of the marriage, the light will go out and darkness will come. Let's repent. Let's bring back the love of God in the marriage. And we'll be able to walk in the light of God's sunshine in the whole. Rise up and let us pray. If you are married, examine your marital relationship with all that we have learned. You wife, are you making it? God's grace is available for you. God will help you. God will support you. God will give you the grace to be the wife you ought to be. My brother, husband, how are you making it? Are you uh, are you as uh, you to be as a husband? Holy understanding strong as you care in companionship are you, are you blameless in conduct at home and everywhere are you abiding in the covenant cutting all relationships with other women outside are you noble in courage as you defend your wife are you defending in contributing to the material and physical and spiritual needs of the family. Let us ask God for the grace and it will help us. 